Hello and welcome, I'm your code monkey. So, very important question, what makes an indie game look low effort? So, this is actually a very interesting and very important question that someone posts on Reddit. This led to a really interesting discussion with a lot of answers. You should absolutely learn from all of these so you know what not to do. As always, when making your game, it's important to know what to do, and also equally important to know what not to do. If you just look at these things and you basically avoid these, then you can ensure your game does not look low effort. And since nowadays on Steam it is so difficult to stand out, because then you really need to make sure that your game does not look low effort. If it does, then people will just ignore it completely, so your game has to look the absolute best it can be. So the first are the obvious things, things like bad graphics, bad voice acting and bugs. So to counter bad graphics, always remember how consistency is the most important thing. You don't need AAA quality meshes, they just need to look like they all fit together. That is without a doubt my best advice when it comes to how to make a game that actually looks good, and that is coming from someone that has absolutely no art skills. I have learned that very much a hard way. If you try to mix things of different styles that don't look like they fit together, it doesn't matter how good individual quality of each individual piece is, if you put it all together it is going to look very messy. Whereas if you have all of your meshes on a certain level of quality that might not necessarily be the best quality meshes, even so, if they all look like they fit together, the game will look much much better. So when it comes to getting nice visuals, always remember how consistency is much more important than just straight up fidelity. For example, here are some excellent looking low poly Viking characters. They look great. And then here's another excellent looking Viking character. This one is a more realistic art style. Again, this one also looks great. So individually, each of these looks really great. But if you combine them both in the same game, things are going to look super messy, really terrible. Personally, that's one of the reasons why I love the low poly style. It is something that I really enjoy, but also at the same time, if you go with this specific low poly style, then you can combine things from multiple publishers, as long as they are all making low poly style, everything will look like it fits together. So you can combine, for example, those synthy assets with these by IT Happy, also combined with these by Just Create, and these by Polyperfect. Those are all individual publishers, but because they all draw in pretty much roughly the exact same style, because that, all of these assets will look like they fit together and make your game look much, much better. So right away, I would say that is my number one tip to make sure a game does not look low effort. If you don't take into account consistency, if you have assets of different styles all together, then everything is going to look very messy. So if you don't want your game to look low effort, make sure you pay attention to consistency. And good news, if you need some assets right now, Unity is running their spring sale. All of the top assets are at 50% off. So a bunch of these I've recommended many times and I'll still recommend them. The Star Pathfinding Project Pro is the perfect pathfinding solution. Hot Reload is really great for helping you speed up iteration. Then Feel is absolutely excellent for helping your game feel awesome. Text Animator is a super easy way to add a ton of polish to your game, and tons more really, really useful tools. Then you've also got the Flash Deals that are at 70% off. So by the time this video goes live, you can pick up this awesome synthy pack for just 15 bucks. Maybe get this farming engine for about 12 bucks to start making a nice farming game prototype. Perhaps make your game stand out with this really impressive class simulation tool. Or again, make your game look really awesome with a really cool UI pack. Then one day, maybe get the ultimate FPS character controller for just like 25 bucks. Or get this nice 2D RPG kit for just about 10 bucks. Or in two days, for just about 15, 20 bucks, you can get this really awesome global illumination tool. So yep, if you need some awesome assets to help your game look really awesome and not low effort, if so, then check out the Spring Sale on the Unity Asset Store. Alternatively, there's also a really excellent Humble Bum that is still running for a few more days. This one contains thousands of UI elements, all of it for just 25 bucks. And there's another one also for just about 20 bucks with a ton of nice stylized models. So yep, check out all the links in the description to make a game that looks awesome and importantly looks consistent. Then when it comes to voice acting, no voice acting is better than bad voice acting. So if you can't afford good voice actors then chances are just avoiding it and just using text will likely be better. That's because if you have no voice acting then your game is pretty much just standard, normal. But if you have bad voice acting that basically takes your game down a notch. And if you have good voice acting, obviously it takes it out. So if you can have good, great, but if you only have bad, might as well not have it at all. Alternatively, if you really want some kind of sound, you can use something that I don't like, something that the original GTA used. So yeah, basically that sound that sounds like someone is talking but without actually saying any words. That is something that I really like and actually included in my very first Steam game. Basically just got a nice sound effect. This is actually a file that I made myself 12 years ago. I basically just set some random stuff to the microphone, then process it heavily over and over again until I got that sound, which is a nice looping sound that kind of works whenever you want to say something. But the takeaway is no voice acting is better than bad voice acting. And of course, you should test your game as much as possible to ensure a bug-free experience. And on this, playtesting is definitely your friend. So yeah, if you launch your game and basically the first thing that the player sees on the main menu is some kind of bug, like some kind of menu item is not where it should be, or some kind of animation just clips around everywhere? If so, then obviously that does not give a good first impression. So you should try to eliminate bugs as much as possible. Now obviously getting it 100% bug free is almost impossible, but one thing you should absolutely not do is just make sure that you only test by yourself. 
If so, you only have one person, only one machine, that is not going to be enough. People play games in different ways, and people have different types of setups. So something that might work perfectly fine the way that you play on your own PC might completely break when someone else plays in a different way on their own PC. So yeah, playtesting is definitely your friend. Ask all of your friends, family, random testers, try to get as many people as possible to play your game, give you feedback in terms of improving things in terms of game design, game mechanics, but also just technically. Did you find any bugs or did something happen that was not intentional? Make sure you playtest your game as much as possible to try to eliminate these things. Because again, nothing looks more low effort than having tons of bugs straight up as soon as you open the game. Then some more things to avoid. So empty spaces, of course. It's better to have tightly packed interesting spaces than vast worlds with nothing in them. This is definitely a very, very big one, very important one that clearly demonstrates when some kind of game was someone's first game, some kind of hobbyist game. As soon as beginners are starting to make games, one of the things they're probably going to encounter is some kind of terrain tool. And as soon as you do, you will see just how easy it is to make massive giant worlds, just add more terrains next to each other, add a little bit of variation, and you have something that kind of seems really huge. But then if you leave it just like this, like many beginners do, then you really just have a huge amount of space, but it's all completely empty, everything completely uninteresting. If all you have is really just grass and emptiness for vast tracts of land, if so, then your player will not enjoy it. You as the developer might think that it looks great. Hey, I've got a huge world, it's got like, it's bigger than Skyrim. But players themselves, they don't want that. They want something to actually do in that world. And as a solo developer, you definitely cannot add as much detail as a game like Skyrim or GTA. So don't even try to compete with that. Instead of making vast, huge open worlds, instead of that, make something much more tight, but make it so that pretty much every corner, there's something interesting in it. Then something else to avoid is bad, uninteresting content. If you have it, then remove it. Whether it be levels, weapons, characters, etc. It is better to have a shorter, but more compelling game. Once again, it goes back to what I was saying about bad voice acting, how your game starts off, let's say, on this level. If you've got good voice acting, then it's going to elevate your game, but if it's bad voice acting, it is going to drag it down. Same thing for in terms of mechanics, in terms of any kind of content. If you have X number of levels in your game, and they're all on, let's say, this rough quality, if so, and then you add a level that is much, much worse, that is really just going to drag everything down. So if you have something that objectively is much worse than everything else in the game, it is much better to just completely remove it, that is going to make that your game is quite a bit shorter, has less content, but the content that it has is actually very good. And players absolutely do prefer something that is shorter, but everything is interesting, as opposed to something that has technically 100 hours of gameplay, but people are too bored and they give up after 5 hours. One of the best examples of this is the game A Short Hike. It is a very, very tiny game, just about 2 hours long, and yet it is overwhelmingly positive. That is because the experience itself, whilst being very short, is actually very good. So when in doubt, go for less content, but more interesting content. Then something else to avoid is not polishing. So low effort games have no animations, things just appear. They have no sound effects or VFX, things just happen. That is definitely a very, very big problem that a lot of beginner and hobbyist games have. Like when you click on some kind of menu, there's no color change to the button. The, cha the button does not jump up, doesn't do any kind of animation. You just click on it, another window suddenly just pops up. There's no animations, nothing, nothing flashy, nope. It's all technically functional, but it feels pretty bad. I always say how polish is what separates a good game from a great game. In this case, complete lack of polish is what separates a game that looks very hobbyist, very low effort, something that actually looks pretty nice. And then if you spend even more time on polish, that's how you take it from nice to really great. Just a while ago, I made a video on an exercise that I really think you should do. And that exercise is very much this, very much training your own polished skill set. Basically over here, I showcased an example of a specific game that looks super well polished. And you can definitely see the difference that it would make if this game did not have all this polish. If the car just hit other cars and everything just vanished, didn't even explode, didn't have any particle effects, nothing like that. If just hit, vanish, continue. If it wasn't like that, then the game would definitely look very much low effort. As opposed to this one, which looks really awesome with all of these effects, definitely looks like something that was made with a prompt professional. So again, not low effort. Next thing to avoid is a wall of text tutorial. So show, don't tell is a classic rule. It's a classic rule for a reason. Many beginner devs just explain the whole game with a giant wall of text. So yep, this one is pretty obvious. I have to say, I definitely did this myself in my original Flash games when I started making games 15 years ago. Back then, the Flash game area, there were lots of games that did that. And by lots of games, I would say lots of hobbyist games. Because back then, the Flash game area, most people making Flash games were hobbyists. There were very few professionals. So most people, myself included, were very much hobbyists. And most people, always on the main menu, had some kind of play button and some kind of how to play button. And that one basically just showed the giant wall of text. How does the game work? How do you play it? That is definitely something you should avoid. That is something that definitely screams beginner game dev. The classic example of this is Super Mario Bros. How in the beginning there is zero text and the game pretty much just teaches you how to play just by having some very clever design. Basically as the player is moving around, they see a Goomba which causes them to jump, which causes them to interact with the blocks above, 
which then gets them to see what exactly they can do with those blocks and how they should probably avoid those little tiny characters. Now you don't have to be that abstract. You can just have a nice simple level one and you can have some contextual clues that show up whenever the player does some kind of action. So whenever it shows the same thing, it's okay to show a little bit of text. Just make sure you don't show a massive wall of text basically trying to explain the entire game at once. And of course, another thing to avoid is a bad scene page. So you should invest in a good high quality capsule image, give some description and pick five high quality screenshots and a good short trailer. Making a good store page is absolutely essential. You can immediately see when a store page was made by someone that are just working on their very first game, which again, is perfectly fine. But if you want your game to stand out, then you have to do some things more properly. So if on description, you have to make sure to write a good short description, make it focus on more of the benefits as opposed to, for example, trying to explain the lore of your game. Then you need to make sure you select all of the correct tags for your game. This is super important. Then for the screenshots, pick just a handful of screenshots, make sure they show different things. Also make sure they don't show something like debug visuals or prototype visuals. Make sure they actually look proper. Again, going back to the first thing, the visual, how your game looks is extremely important. Down the description, definitely make sure you add some nice GIFs that showcase what the game is all about. Make sure you talk about what are the main benefits, what things the game actually has, talking about, talk about what are the pros to it, what are the unique things. And of course, make a good short trailer. So usually something like between one and two minutes, usually that's good. When it comes to learning about marketing and how to make a great scene page, I highly recommend you learn from Chris Zukowski. Chris is a scene marketing expert. He has a ton of knowledge on this specific area. I made a bunch of videos with him. So definitely go ahead and watch these videos. If you know nothing about marketing and you watch all of these, you will definitely learn a massive amount. Also importantly, right now, Chris is running a spring sale on his courses. For example, the Wishlist and Visibility Masterclass. This puts an insane amount of Steam marketing knowledge in just one single place. Learn about how Steam works, when to launch a Steam page. Learn about copywriting so you know what you should say. Do some betas and some demos to help you gather wishlists. And do a bunch of things to help you find massive success during your game launch. All these strategies basically for zero cost. The goal with this course is to teach you how Steam works as opposed to spending thousands of dollars on paid ads. The spring sale is lasting for a few more days, so check it out with the link in the description. Now there's a ton more in the comments of that thread, definitely give it a read. So here on the original red post asking what makes an indie game look low effort, and if there's lots of nice comments over here, talking about a lot of things that I already mentioned, like empty spaces, yep, definitely avoid that. Talking about getting rid of bad voice acting, talking about consistency, talking about polish, talking about aesthetics, talking about animations, transitions, and so on. So you have a bunch more comments over here, all very interesting, definitely make sure you read this. And also in the comments, someone mentioned, so does that make Game Freak, Pokemon, and India low effort studio? They asked that due to the fact that the recent 3D Pokemon games they definitely look very sparse, very basic. So it does seem that this one kind of goes against everything that I just said. But as I said down here, someone replied, no, they simply have an audience that won't buy their games no matter what they do. But if you don't have a company like audience yourself, just like Pokemon, then definitely pay attention to all these points to ensure your game does not look low effort. So as always, when it comes to general guidelines, those are applicable to like 99% of people. But if you are the 1% that already has something super special, like for example, you've got a comp like audience for 30 years. If so, then you can definitely avoid some of this. But for 99% of you, I would definitely recommend you pay attention to this. For me, I love these sorts of threads. It is very important to know what to do, but also extremely important to know what not to do. If you manage to not do all those things, then your game will be much better off. So yep, whatever game you're currently working on, I highly recommend you go through this list. Try to avoid all of these things, and if you do that, then your game will definitely be much better. By the way, I wrote about this in my Game Dev Report newsletter. This is what I write every single week with Game Dev News and any interesting articles that I come across every week. Send up for free with the link in the description. Alright, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.